The circuit for the road race at the 2015 Mars Cycling Australia Road National Championships is once again around Mount Buninyong, a course that is feared by many and cherished by a select few. The start finish line is on Geelong Road, where they then quickly make a left hand turn up the Midland Highway and they can see the climb stretch out in front of them. So I've just come around the corner, first corner of the 2015 Road Nationals, and I'm probably just thinking about wind direction, which is a massive headwind. <laughs> And uh, just thinking about the feed zone, setting myself up, watching any teams that are sort of getting together to make a move on the climb. What's going through your head, Jack? I'm doing a pretty similar thing. I'm always making sure we come around that corner, sort of in the top 10 to 15 wheels. So you're coming into the climb at the front of the bunch. You're not in the way of trying to get caught up and move up during the climb and wasting energy. And I'm trying to make sure that I know where my feeders are, I can get my bottle of water, bottle of talk mix and a gel. In the women's race, when they get to the point of pointy end of the sort of day in the last couple of laps, this is probably one of the trouble zones. We sort of finish the, the quick part of the feed and as it kicks up here, girls are a bit tired and usually the first split goes here and then the real big split on the second part of the climb. But if, uh, if it's a headwind along here and you lose those couple of wheels, it's sort of really hard to get back, I reckon. They then make a left-hand turn onto Mount Buninyong Road itself, where they get a little bit of respite from the climb before it rears up towards the sky. I sort of use this section mainly to recover. Yeah. I, I find it's the only sort of recovery you have from the bottom of the feed all the way to the top. So you sit back a couple of wheels and suck a few breaths in. Good point, just to have a little drink as well, just before you. Good point. Go ultra hard on this next section up here. It's always important to make sure you're not getting too boxed in as well because everyone's sort of spread across the road if it's a bit easy and if the pack's going you're in the wrong position. Yeah. It can be incredibly hard to get around some people and then back onto the move that's going. This is where the KOM starts. Usually this is where the crowds start to line the road. It's sort of really broken up into two sections this time as well. Yeah. You do this first bit, there's that lull in the middle, and then the aggression really starts. This first bit's normally hard enough for someone to have an attack, but people will normally bridge back across during the slightly flatter section up here. And then I think the real decisive moves happen just a little bit further up the hill yeah. where the crowd is, it's a bit steeper, it's a bit harder. I think to me this is this is where the race is made or made a loss. This is where, yeah, Simon Garen was attacked and I guess everyone thought Cadell would be the person to go here, but Simon was in excellent form and this is where he made his move and created that select group. They make a left turn, they then head onto Yankee Flat Road and into Gear Avenue, but the descent doesn't really commence until they hit Fiskin Road. This section here is probably one of the hardest sections on the course. You're really struggling. People start to kick over the top. Slightly false flat going around this corner. And it can be really hard to get back onto the wheels of the right in front. Once you sort of make it around that corner though, you start the descent. You can get a bit of a run and get a nice sit on the back of someone and save your legs for the next time you want to climb. Yeah, most people use this for a bit of recovery, but a couple of years ago it was where Amanda Spratt attacked and rode away solo to a first win for Orca Green Edge. So. I think it's a, sort of a deceiving little spot, but if you pick the right moment, it can also be a winning move. Normally by this stage of the descent, you're carrying quite a bit of speed down the section here, and you fire sort of through this right-hander, and then take the left-hander, and you're still on a bit more of a descent before it starts to kick up again, just around the corner. So I find this to be probably a regroup section on the course, really. It's really hard to, to get a gap here and the bunch naturally sort of rolls over itself. Yeah, if you sort of uh, let the wheels go a bit on the climb and drift back, this is a really good position to start to move back up to the front before the real descent starts. And you really want to be at the front of the bunch on the proper descent because it's quite, quite, quite twisty as well as a bit narrow. So you want to try and minimise the chances of having anything go wrong by being near the front. It's fair to say though, if you 
get to this point of the course and you're with the front of the group, you're either thinking about a sprint finish with a, you know, usually a selected peloton, or uh, you know, the best way to make a move to get away from those sprinters before the finish straight. Well, there's this corner and then there's a slight rise up here, which at the end of the race turns from being a slight rise into quite a berg. And if you are in a small group with quite a few sprinters, this is where you can try and have a bit of an attack and see how tired their legs are. Is this where you're going to go, Jack? Oh, well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll be away by now and have gone on the major climb. Because if I'm here, I'm normally in the company of some very talented bike riders, so it's going to be very hard to get rid of them. So it's usually some sort of crosswind down this straight I find, and the pelotons usually span across the road, and positioning's pretty important because you are getting down to the pointy end of the race. If someone does decide to lay a bit of the smack down and you can really be in the gutter through here and it can be quite hard, especially the wind's up a bit more and it's a full crosswind along this section here. You really sort of want to be top 15 wheels over this crest. Because once you make the next left-hander, you're going quite fast and you're really into the descent by then. So you do tend to climb for a majority of the course, really. Absolutely. 75% you know, of your time on, on each lap is, is climbing, and it's not until you hit this corner that you really start your run back to the finish. I think that's what makes the course so taxing, that you're on the pedal so much, and it's really only from just around that corner that you start to get a bit of a rest and free wheel for a bit, and most of this descent you don't have to pedal for, as long as you're finding the right wheels, and you don't have to touch the brakes too much at all. So I think it's important to remember the, the descent, although not unbelievably technically technical, is uh, it's still a bit of a game changer sometimes. But uh, it is quite a pedally descent. Yeah, and especially when you come around that corner, just back there, the peloton seems to kick quite hard out of it. Yeah. So I think you'll see a lot of the more experienced riders doing is, instead of kicking out of the corner, just rolling around it and not wasting that energy. As long as you're at the front of the bunch, you'll drift back, and then you'll be able to regain position down this descent here. Usually at this point in the bike roads, it's a pretty small group. And uh, everyone's getting ready to lead out their sprinters, and if they've got teammates left, <laughs> yeah. want to make that final dash to the line. But these last two kilometres of downhill are, are pretty nerve-wracking, really, when you think about a win. Yeah, in this position, if you're not a sprinter and you have a sprinter with you, it's going to be incredibly hard to win. Do you think at this point in the race last year for Cadell, it was too late for him to win against someone like Simon Garrens? Yeah, I think if you're taking someone that's quite a bit quicker than you to the line and you're at this point I think they really need to sort of screw up a bit for you to be able to get the win. So we're in the last couple of hundred metres here I know today's a headwind but normally it's a tailwind Gracie Elvin's renowned at kicking really early in a sprint and she holds such good power for an extended period of time that this really suits her but I think uh, you know headwind's another story so this year will be Sorry. very interesting this is sort of where all the barriers start. Everyone's generally on the side of the road, giving it a good cheer. You hear the commentators speaking about what's about to happen. And this is where... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was premature, I think it's here. <laughs>